What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be talking about what I did today in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading into the month of September and kind of just wrapping up the month of August in 2019 here. So if you find value in this video, feel free to go down below and smash that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And feel free to join our Strive Smart Facebook group and the Strive Smart Discord group chat. Those are linked down below. So guys, let's get right into it now. The S&P 500, ticker symbol SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies, ended up closing the day today up $18.78, up 0.65%. So pretty strong green day out of the S&P 500 today. Going over here to the NASDAQ, we can see up $36.50, up around 05 0.48% to be exact here. Another solid day for the NASDAQ. If we go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, it had a 1% day. It was up 258 points. And you may be asking yourself, why was the Dow a lot higher in terms of a percentage? Well, Boeing had a pretty good day today, and that has weight on um, the Dow Jones. You guys can see Boeing is up about 1.5%. These are just some of the uh, you know top performers uh, in, the, in the Dow. And I believe UNH also had a good day today as well, up around 2%, up $4.42. So overall, across the board, the markets today were pretty green. And you can see on, on you know, the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, I have a bunch of trend lines drawn across because I'm looking religiously at the support levels, at the resistance levels, seeing where we could potentially get topped off at, where we might hold, etc. So I kind of want to go over that with you guys right now. And it's honestly no surprise based on what you're seeing here. Um, you know, it's very obvious to see that the S&P has held 2850 very nicely, and it held that level twice in the past, on the 1st of August to the 5th of August, and in the middle of August on the 13th to the 14th, and then now towards the end of August. I've been talking about this level in pretty much every single one of my market update videos here on the channel, and honestly, until we break that, guys, you know, the S&P really has potential to go either way here, especially if we pop out out and break out of the moving average resistances. Let's say we break back into 2900 and especially if we break past 2930 and start to get up into the mid 2900s, I think that there would be a lot of bullish potential if we do that. But on the flip side since we very nicely, you know, and we break that we could be going down from that point in time, maybe down to low 2800s, maybe even back down to the 2700s. But the fact that we've kind of been trading in this horizontal pattern here, if I zoom in, honestly, if I go to the 20-day hour chart, you guys can see it even better. Actually, no, that's not the 20-day. This is the 20-day. You guys can see horizontally, we've been trading in a very clear range of supports and a very clear range of, uh, or rather support and a very clear range of resistance. We've literally had a triple top and a double bottom now. So whichever way we pop out of this horizontal pattern is really the direction and where the S&P is going to be going, at least in the short term. And uh, those moving averages as well, they're very important in determining the direction of the S&P 500 as of right now. You know, if we get rejected by them, that might be a bearish move, especially if we break below 2850. If we break above them, start breaking into 2950, high 2950s, whatever it may be, that's going to be bullish, right? So if we go over here to the NASDAQ, kind of the similar thing here. Um, you know, we're trending under the moving average resistances on the hourly chart here, you know, under the 180 SMA. And right now we're peaking above the 50 SMA, but overall the trend is still pointing down, right? We have a bearish cross here, which is is whenever a smaller time frame moving average crosses below a larger time frame moving average, right? This yellow line you see here, this is the 180-day simple moving average. This green one is the 50-day, and we clearly see the 50-day has crossed below the 180, and that is a bearish move, right? If we go a bit further here to the 184-hour, 
right? You guys can kind of see we're trading in a horizontal channel just like the S&P. We're trading, you know, above 7450, which which has been a solid support where we bounced twice in the past. And the resistance we're seeing here is at around 7700 to around 7775, right? That's the clear spot where we've seen a triple top at and then a big rejection. So if I just drag this across you guys can clearly see it even more, right? So whichever way we pick, just like the S&P, if we break out here, if we just dump below the support, that's the direction that we're going to be moving, right, in the NASDAQ, at least in the short term. And of course, depending on, uh, you know, what's going on in the economy at that point, is the media blowing something up? Is there trade war tensions? Are they heightened? You know, a lot of things can play into the psychology of where this ends up moving. And I, in my opinion, guys, if we have something with the trade war again something blows up on twitter whatever it may be new tariffs we're going to be moving in the downwards direction in all the markets because each time we've gotten that in the past the markets have dumped for the most part right so let's go to the dow very quickly guys um you can see Dow right now is holding above 25,800. We're trending still below 26,200, but we're just in this channel between 25,500 and about 26,200, roughly a 700 point range. We're trending under the moving averages here, both the 50 and the 180 SMA. But again, just like the Dow, or rather the NASDAQ and the SP, whichever direction we pick, if we break above that resistance, that's 26,200. We break above the 180 SMA, that's going to be bullish, right? If we get rejected here, dump below 25,500, that's going to be bearish. So at this point, since all the indexes are trending, you know, <coughs> in a in a uh, horizontal channel right now. We just need to see what direction we go to. If there's anything, um, you know, going on in the economy again, like I said, that's influencing the direction because that can have a heavy pull, whether it's positive or negative. It's just really important to just keep an eye on everything right now, guys. Especially with how sensitive the markets have been, how volatile they've been. You know, if you're trading, if you're looking to buy in into long-term stocks, and you want to like kind of time your position on one of these days where the markets drop, I think it's very important and just steady watch the markets understand what triggers the market negatively positively and just keep an eye on the news right everything that's going on day to day i just think it's super important um whether you're looking to invest or um you know trade a stock of course trade a stock or swing trade day trade whatever it may be so that's kind of the market update for today's video let me know down below in the comment section what are your thoughts on the market right now what are you looking to do with your money are you sitting on cash whatever it may be i love talking to you guys down below so let me know so today guys i ended up trading altria ticker symbol mo altria is a stock that i actually talked about this morning and i was watching it due to the hype around well not really the hype at this point more of the news surrounding a potential re-merger between Altria and Philip Morris. So this is a company, or these two companies, tobacco companies, they were actually united back in 2008 and, or before that too, and that's in 2008 is when they actually ended up splitting ways. And now they're looking to potentially come back together as a company reunite remerge and that news actually came out yesterday morning you guys can see altria popped up all the way to 52 so it kind of had that really big you know initial reaction that it ended up dumping heavily at that point you know that was over a 15 percent move from the peak all the way down to 44 dollars and you guys can see that support actually held throughout the day to, or uh, the aftermarket hours and into the pre-market hours of today's session and that support being at around 45 ish dollars if i get one of my little tools out here you guys can see <coughs> excuse me guys my voice is a bit scratchy today but you guys can see 44 I guess you could say 45, 4480, roughly that general area is a strong support. So, you know, we popped up to 4560. I think that was, yeah, that was this morning pre market. Ended up pulling down to roughly that support level today, opening up that margin of profit that I was looking for. And just because, you know, I was looking at this simply because of the news catalyst, right? A lot of the times these might end up running the day after, although the news.
news already came out the day before. It's kind of weird. It's tricky sometimes. But sometimes, you know, stocks do end up running. So this one ended up dropping 1.8%. Not anything crazy, but the retest and then the pop on this support is what kind of gave me... Um, kind of the initial okay maybe I should take a look at this one maybe I should potentially look to trade it because it was on my watch list again I talked about it in this morning's video for those of you guys um, that were able to catch that so you know we started to trend up here we broke moving average resistances, and this is when I started to scale in at about, I believe, like $45.23, and then I started to ride up, and then once we ended up breaking out of this resistance, which was the resistance from this morning, I ended up adding a bit more money, bringing my total position to around $45, I think it was like $45.40-ish, cents, and then... After this pullback and this pop is when I ended up selling off, guys. When we started to pull back here, I was like, oh, crap. I'm, like, even right now. But then when we held that 50 SMA, if we were to break there, I might have taken a break even or just a tad bit of a loss on the position if we were to break down here and maybe get back down to like the 4530s or whatever it may be but the fact that we held a higher low on that 50 SMA, that kind of gave me honestly reason to just continue to hold it and, and just play it out and ride it out and that's exactly what I ended up doing uh, you know ended up just taking the profits once we filled the gap back up at like 4610 just to play it safe so from where I ended up getting in guys up to 4610 you can see it was a day trade of about 1.5 uh, 1.4 ish percent so that is what I ended up doing today all three is just honestly one that I'm going to be continuing uh, watching because any news that might come out with this who knows it might tank the stock it might pop the stock up if they actually do end up merging i'm just really interested in seeing um what's going to happen with uh ticker symbol mo here so that's it for the trading update uh portion of the video let me know down below what you guys ended up doing um trading today i would love to know so to finish off guys i want to talk about a couple of stocks that i am pulling up on my phone right now that i am watching uh, for the rest of this week and honestly heading into the month of September. So the first one is Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC. So BAC at this point, looking at the four hour chart, we can notice one very good thing about it. We see a double bottom on the previous support at around $26.43. And that's where we actually bottomed out at when we sold off in the markets in the month of May. BAC got from $31 all the way down to about $26.30. We hit that level again in the middle of August. This was literally 10 days ago. We hit that level. I was actually watching it um, during this time period to see if it was going to hold it. I didn't end up trading it. No big deal, right? But now we're seeing a, a juicier opportunity because listen to this, guys. Double bottoms usually indicate to a potential bullish breakout in a stock, right? So we're seeing a double bottom. Now all we need to see, in my opinion, is a pop above the 50 SMA resistance, which we've clearly struggled under over the past couple of uh, really the past 10 days because the past 10 days is where we've been downtrending in BAC stock. So I think if we end up popping, breaking out um, above this level, maybe 27.25, 27.50, this is going to be a point in time where I'll definitely be taking a swing position in BAC and managing my risk accordingly because listen to this guys, if you get in at 27.25, 27.30, your um, risk is about two three percent to the downside really down to that um you know support level here but of course if you have a stop loss at two percent your risk is only two percent right but just judging off of the levels here in terms of support resistance you know your maximum downside based off the technicals here right again two three percent your maximum upside if we get back up to thirty dollars even let's say thirty dollars that's around nine percent let's say we get back up to those highs at about thirty one dollars that's around eleven percent so the risk is about two three percent down to the support the reward is roughly eleven percent so i'm liking that in terms of bac i'm just waiting for that pop um, above that 50 sma i think that's going to be very very important another one here is ticker symbol t no one really talks about this uh this stock that much but t has been on an absolute roll this year atnt this is one of my long-term investments i've been buying this one um not as low as the 26s to be completely honest with you guys but i've been buying it in the these levels like 
30, 31, 32. I just like this company, uh, the dividend. I like the debt repayment program that they're doing because they do have a lot of debt. They're trying to shave that off. And I like the dividend and the future of 5G for the company. That's just a very gist, um, you know, why I like the company overall. But on a trading perspective here, from a trading perspective, we hit a, a peak at $35.60. We're pulling back down now, and there's this area, there's this zone at about $34 to about $34.50 where we need to see T hold above. If we hold that old resistance where we double topped here a couple months ago, a couple weeks ago, actually, we hold that level. We pop above the 50 SMA. We're also going to be holding above the 180 SMA support here on the four-hour chart. I think that's going to be a very good, um, you know, dip buy on, on on ticker symbol T here for a potential swing trades. So there's a lot of swing trades that I'm watching right now. Honestly, it's T. It's BAC. BAC obviously has a lot more potential than T. You know, T, if we end up getting on the dip here, you know, up to the highs, that's about 1%, 2%. If we end up breaking above maybe, to, uh, you know, another high here, maybe $36, if we continue this upper, uh, uptrend of higher highs, that might be a 3%, 4% uh, trade there. But still, you know, riding the momentum, not fighting the trend, just riding the trend, this could be a very good um, entry point on um, ticker symbol T. So I'm watching that. One that a subscriber and a Discord member ended up uh, calling out wanting me to talk about is MGI. And this is a stock that you guys probably know this by now if you've been following my channel. This is not really my style of stocks. I don't really trade penny stocks to be completely honest with you guys. I really don't trade penny stocks ever. Maybe sometimes if I see an opportunity, um, you know, Neo stock was one of them, which I'm actually still holding. That was more of the kind of like a long-term spec play. That wasn't necessarily a day trade, but that's actually the only like penny stock that I own in my portfolio. And it's just actually a speculative play. But in terms of like short-term day trading, um, I'm not really doing too much with penny stocks to be completely honest with you guys. But, you know, these really rely on, volume and they rely on um not really to say hype because i don't know about this company in particular but a lot of penny stocks they revolve around hype so if someone if there's a catalyst around it it might pop 100 percent, whatever it may be you guys can see here on this chart you know that very well could have happened here with mgi there might have been there's definitely a catalyst on this day because the stock went up hundreds of percent, literally like 150% um, in the matter of one day. But you guys can see at this point, um, you know, on a technical basis, it seems like it's filled the gap back up to that point in time where it ended up flying up from all that, I'm guessing, hype, right? And at this point, if we look on a, on a larger term uh, basis, okay, this is actually looking decent on a long-term basis. I'm not, again, I'm not too sure about this company, what fundamentals caused it to go from 17 a share down to a dollar. That's, that's, that's probably a negative thing, right? We've seen Fitbit go down from 50 down to $3, GoPro the same. So I don't know if this is a similar scenario, but, you know, technically speaking here, We've broken above the EMA, we've broken out of the 50 SMA now, that's a pretty good sign, and we're looking to test that resistance at $4 that we saw on the 4-hour chart, that if we break above it, you know, there's some levels that we might be getting to. We may be getting to 450 next, we may be going up to 575 right? We may be going back up to 630 Another one I'm watching is $8 here, and if we zoom back in, you probably won't see it because the chart doesn't show that high, but let me go to the one year. Let's see if we can see it on the one year. There we go. Perfect. If you guys can see it, you know, let's say we end up holding this level, you know, although we are overbought, I don't know how that's going to end up playing out, but let's say we end up getting some hype around the stock again. This could end up flying up to 450, right? Very easy, and especially if there's volume coming in. So, you know, overall, this one may pull back, right, because it Again, we're very overextended. We may pull back and retest that 50 SMA on the four-hour chart. That could offer a dip buy if you do, um, you know, want to take a, uh, you know, this particular position in a penny stock, whatever your style of trading is. You know, we may be pulling down to 375, you know, on this hourly chart that you guys can see. There's a lot of different places that this one could be going to. Again, it's not my style, but hey, if you like trading, you know, 
uh, a high volatility stock, stocks that can run up 100%, 200%. This one's proven to have done it in the past. It's done it again literally in the past couple of weeks. So, hey, it might level up again to $6, whatever it may be. And uh, I'll just keep an eye on it for the next week to kind of see if my analysis ends up panning out. But that's it. Honestly, those three are ones that I'm personally watching. Um, CMG, uh, I guess you could throw this one in as well. I talked about it this morning. This one's setting up, in my opinion, to maybe pull down a bit to the 50 SMA. That could also open up a potential swing trade on CMG there. Um, a dip buy, I'm liking that. Let's take a look at some inverse ETFs very quickly before I do end off this video. Inverse ETFs, natural gas, let's see what it's doing. It's breaking out, guys. This is a pretty good sign. We're breaking above long-term moving average resistances here on the four-hour chart. Um, now, I would love to see it just continuing to pop and get into the 230s. Uh, UGAS goes up whenever natural gas goes up, so this could be one. Um, definitely just keep on your watch list because when natural gas gets in that bull run phase, um, you know, when winter comes around, you know, it does pretty well typically. I'm not saying it's always going to do well, but it typically does well. And uh, you can see... We may be popping up, and this could be a perfect dip buy on um, you guys. So that's it, guys. I kind of have to run here. I have some errands to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, it was a bit quicker than normal, or if, at least it feels like it was. But if you did enjoy the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me, whether it's stock market, trading, investing, long-term investing, personal finance, just tips in general. This is the channel for you. And feel free to share this video with a friend for those friends of yours that might find it useful. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Peace out. What is going on, everybody?